And well, it was one of these days where I had a lot of things to do and decided instead to scroll Nangag. Until I came across this post about a card from Magic the Gathering called Terrifying Presents. And look at that. I just love the feeling of this picture so you know what. I've decided to flex some game developer skills and make an actual VR game out of this. So let's first concentrate on the visual of our game. Based on this picture, we know that we have obviously a ground to make, some huge trees, lots of grass, some lighting settings, and in case you didn't notice, a gigantic spider. Well, the art of a good terrain design is to make sure to add in your background some point of interest around your player, like a big mountain for example. This helps the player to locate himself in the world and help him feel emerge in your game. However, be careful to not infect your game of the World of Warcraft Best Tube disease by surrounding your player everywhere with ill, making him feel like a giant bathtub. For that matter, I like to make some sort of pass in my terrain, which visually helps the player to have some reference point, but also prevent this problem. And here we go, I think we did okay for the visual look of our ground, let's now move to the second step, the trees. For that, we will add trees to my terrain and paint them using the brush like we did earlier. I use some of the trees that are present in the Book of the Dead environment, which Unity has made available for everybody to use for free in the Asset Store. Well, if you are making a game that needs vegetation, you really should have a look at these because they are just so good. The main goal here is to add enough element to feel like in a real forest without slowing down our game by placing too much element. Especially here because we are making a VR game which is basically the same as playing two instances of our game at the same time each for one eye. For that matter, we will replace the trees that are too far away with this 2D image. The player will never read them, so he won't be able to make the difference. Next step is to add the grass. A little trick that I like to do is mix some grass that doesn't move with billboard grass which will follow the player head. This will result in more dense looking grass. The final touch that I didn't plan ahead was to add some rocks around my scene. It's not present in the initial picture, but hey, it looked good and I really like them. And now let's move ahead on the part where the magic happens, the lighting settings. In my forest, I really wanted to emphasize where the light was passing through trees and for that I used Aura which is a volumetric light asset that is completely free. And look at the difference it gives us, it already looks so good. Well, for the sky, I have had a flare to the sun that seems to fit well with my environment. Then, I changed the skybox to something a little bit more cloudy. The sky in our image looked really bright compared to the darkness of the forest, so for that, I increased the exposure of the skybox. Next, I added some fog to my scene and matched the color. And now, most important part, the post-processing. Here, I added some bloom and set the color grading to these dark contrasted settings that I think match really well the spirit of this picture. And here we go, I think we can already rewire ourselves with a montage break. Ok, so what is left is to make the spider for our game. We can just open a 3D modeling software like Blender, if we are poor, then we can start sculpting the body of our spider. Be careful when doing the legs, because spider have 8 of them and the little legs in front of them doesn't count. And I'm just joking with you because I'm too bad at 3D modeling, I have just imported a 3D model that I have of a spider in my computer and scaled it a, bit, a little bit more. Ok, so the first thing I did with the spider is match the walking animation with the speed of the spider. 
I also make it possible for my spider to climb and this is how I actually made Spider Simulator 2019. And just look at how creepy the thing look and it's even more creepier in our forest environment. Okay, finally, I had to make my spider walk automatically from one point to another and for that I use the nav mesh of Unity and just here, by clicking on my environment, I can set the position of my spider to the target I hit with my mouth. And here we go, now the final step was to put this in VR. If you are interested on how to make a VR game, I've made a complete series tutorial that will help us doing that. The trick here was to create a longbow in VR, for that I used the one provided with a virtual reality toolkit, which is a free asset, and update it with the longbow that is free with the Steam VR SDK. And finally, after some tweaking, like adding a death image when the spider reached us, and making it possible to kill the spider when we hit them with the arrow, this is the result. Look at how awesome this looks. Well, it really was a fun project for me to test myself on making a VR game and I'm really happy on the result. I think we did a great job at recreating the initial look from of the picture we saw on Nagag and more than that, defending myself with a longbow alone in the wood against this beast is really fun. But the real challenge here was making this quickly and without spending any money and all of that was made possible by the ill awesome creator which created the assets that I have used in my project. Obviously right now this is not a real game, this is just a prototype. So if you have any idea of what I can add in my game, don't hesitate to leave a comment and make sure to subscribe if you want more content about game development. Thank you for watching this video till the end and see you in the next one.